Mayuresh Joshi, Head of Equity Research at William O'Neill India is joining us right now on the show. Mayuresh, uh, good morning. Yesterday's session looked like, uh, you know, uh, you know, knee-jerk reaction to what we didn't see on Friday uh, accumulated on Monday's session and with the rest of the globe doing what it did, it amplified. But looks like today's session will also uh, improve and you'll see a bounce back coming in. Aside from that, is it still more prudent to be stock specific? Morning, Devina. Morning, Neeraj. I think uh, to, to highlight Neeraj's point, right, to take it as a day as it comes right I think that would be the appropriate strategy because you never know how the escalations will come about right and the markets might react accordingly so I think it's very prudent to probably have a very stock specific approach uh, because what is happening in terms of the global context is obviously going to drag uh, or, or keep the overhang on uh, uh, risk on assets like equities uh, generally so I think uh, if, if you pinpoint what is expected to come in the next three to four weeks we've got a budget around the corner key expectations of what can come through the budget and what sectors can probably get positively impacted and probably stay a little bit uh, less affected because of the global turmoil if it probably has to happen on a larger scale. I think you probably need to focus on that stocks at this point of time. But clearly, I think the markets uh, have breached uh, the kind of uh, 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 the kind of momentum that they had, uh, and, uh, and and with the build up that is probably happening on the FNO side, they've taken off key uh, support levels. The 2150 DMA has mm -hmm. taken off in one go yesterday, mm -hmm. though on lower volumes. But again, I think uh, that overhang will persist. So I think it's it's very prudent as you rightly stated. I think. A stock specific approach. Well, let's see if we have a good day. Well, the start seems to be promising. And what could lead uh, this could be well be HDFC Bank. Uh, Bairesh, what did you make of the quarter three update? Just the, uh, I mean, there is there is proof. Uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and certainly the update suggests that there has been a gravitation of investors and depositors towards either increasing the deposits or starting deposits yeah. which ensures that the low cost deposit base for HDFC bank continues. Oh it does and I think that's a stellar number that they posted so I think uh, the deposit number that you're talking about the advances number that you're talking about I think that keeps them in good stead right uh, and that's where the differentiating factor is uh, so the comparative that get drawn between the larger private sector banks and the PSU counterparts uh, I think the larger private sector banks are still outperforming on all these parameters that you put across uh, so yes CASA has moderated attack a bit, uh, but I think it's more to do in terms of the core growth itself. So the core numbers are going to be there. Asset quality pressures are not going to be so evident, though they have ventured out into corporate book as well. But the underwriting thereof has been extremely good. Uh, so I don't foresee uh, uh, any any issues in terms of how the earnings will pan out, and that clearly reflects in terms of larger ROAs and ROEs. So I think the ROAs ROEs are not comparable to the others as well. Valuations might be higher, but again, I think I don't mind paying uh, higher valuations if uh, quality and numbers are probably something to stick with. Yeah, just the growth and I don't know I get this feeling uh, and we were talking about this yesterday on countdown as well that Bajaj Finance, HDFC, Kotak etc right now have the option to grow at the pace that they want to grow. The fact that they are growing at the particular exactly. pace suggests that they want their asset quality to remain pristine yeah, or as pristine exactly. as it can be in the current scenario and therefore the other question Mayuresh then Bajaj Finance showed the drop yesterday yeah. because maybe the market in its wisdom anticipated 40 percent but the management is stuck to 35 percent. Are you as disappointed? or would you use dips like these to probably re-enter an expensive name but a quality name? Well again it's fair enough right I mean I was about to come to that point itself that uh, A they are based uh, out of uh, very strong underwriting standards that's point one the second element is the capital advocacy for all these players remain extremely strong so as you rightly pointed out I think they pick and choose now on who to lend how to lend and on what manners do they lend in terms of their own standards itself so I think they're not going out there in the market and lending to everybody that probably is coming out there for advances so so again, I think if you look at the bases, HDFC Bank, Bajaj Finance, I think it's impossible for you to expect that they'll keep on growing on a certain level at 40%. HDFC Bank grew at a certain level few quarters back at 30% plus. Uh, but as the base keeps on moving higher, I think it's impossible for the bank to grow at that rate. So even a 20-25% is good enough uh, because I think that will ensure steady earnings coming their way. And as you pointed out, I think the asset quality is not something which they compromise. Uh, is it enough though for uh, people who've put money in the QYP? I mean, have they paid for uh, you know their money just <laughs> sitting there and, uh, growing and at not 25%. growing at yeah, growing at 25 no, so percent. You I mean, let's understand the business cycles as well, right? I mean, the situation that you're probably going through at this point of time, the non-food credit uh, seven, seven and a half percent at this point of time. So you need to be extremely prudent and selective to whom you're lending, right? The AAA corporates 
are very well uh, uh, off in terms of borrowing from the bond market itself because I think the kind of spreads that they probably get from the bond market is far uh, uh, far lucrative compared to even the bank or the term deposits that they get. Uh, so I think when you're probably looking at the economic cycle right now, I think it's fair enough that they're probably growing at that pace. But as the cycle improves, uh, I think they're in a far better position to go off that footing that they've got because they've got all, all the ammunition that they probably need. So I think in a good cycle which, when it starts, I'm and not all sure. Guns blazing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then I think the earnings will just zoom up. So, yeah, well. <coughs> Mahiresh, uh, yesterday's session, Titan's Q3 update helped it stay afloat in a falling market. Um, they've reduced their guidance and then in the update they've met that guidance. Uh, do you feel that now, I mean, this, this giant that it is and the kind of um, a revenue contribution the jewellery gives to it, with the ex escalating gold prices, will continue to remain a little bit of a headwind? It will. And uh, again, I think numbers a tad bit better than what one expected for Q3 specifically, but uh, increasing gold prices obviously creates a dent. They had already put that in Q2 as well. Gold prices had risen significantly where they saw a huge volume dip. Yeah, at that time when gold started to move exactly, up, it became a little exactly. volatile. And now when you're probably talking about all the uncertainties on a global scale with gold inching up about 40, 41,000 odd, my own sense is that uh, Maybe if these prices stay at elevated levels, I think there will be some amount of bump up as far as the jewelry sales are concerned going forward. In terms of the volumes that we're probably looking at, uh, watches again, I think consumer discretionary demand is a little bit weak. Uh, so I'm better off, I think, uh, looking at uh, the, the gold financing companies because with increase in gold prices, right, the LTVs automatically get readjusted. So I think there is better borrowing uh, uh, limits that they can probably assign to borrowers who come through. And again, I think the underwriting standards thereof with shorter tenors and what they're probably doing in terms of diversification of their gold AUM business itself. I mm. think these players are, in, in my opinion, better place if one it need, really needs to play gold as, as a proxy to equities and equities as a proxy to gold. <coughs> uh, either direction. The other um, news maker today, Mayuresh, might well be PI industry yeah. because of that accident that's happened. Now, there might be a reaction. Um, brokerages are divided. Bhatliwar and Karani is saying that this is a negative. MK is saying even though this is a negative, they will buy the dip. Do you, have you looked at this business and what do you make of this piece of thing? It's a fabulous business, so I think there are no two ways but, about it. But this right? accident? Yeah, so I think this causes a dent and this causes uncertainty and markets okay. specifically in conditions like these don't want uncertainties, right? So there is no clarity that will emerge. So the clarity might emerge after a couple of days when they probably have an assessment done, so on and so forth. Uh, but I think that's the revenue driver, I think. Cramps, as Yash was pointing out, I think has been the revenue driver for PI for a length of time to come. The order book that they've done, the acquisition that they've also probably done over the last few quarters, the asset acquisition that will start paying out but I think the R&D pipeline I think that is very very critical to get uh, service from this plant itself so I think it's a critical plant in terms of their earnings profile and the earnings trajectory that they're maintaining so I think let the clarity come through I think why do you want to play it I think uh, if the clarity is that only a portion has got property damage then there is certain amount of value that can get ascribed I think the market will adjust the value accordingly but I think you don't need to preempt doing that Quality business, quality stock, but wait it out for the news uh, item to probably get clarified and quantified in, in terms of numbers, if any, over the next few days. Mm, okay. okay. Watch out for Z Entertainment, though. 261 and counting. Um, well, you know, fundamentally, there's is, is so much that can uh, that could be, um, if and around with the Z Entertainment, that doesn't make any point talking about it. The other, uh, though, quick talking point, and both technically and fundamentally, we'll make it quick. Mayuresh, to you first, fundamentally, the oil marketing companies, BPHP, RC. Well, not at this point of time, when, when everything is... <laughs> No, what about the uh, others like pains, rubber because of crude oil and what's happening? So it's that? a sentimental uptake, right? So Q3 will not get impacted. So if, yeah. if the prices sustain at these levels for the better part of this quarter, maybe they get impacted in Q4. Q3 numbers are going to have no impact because of what you've probably seen in the last few days. Uh, but again, uh, demand and how demand comes up and, and the sentimental impact that happens because of uh, higher oil prices, I think that does play on the stocks. Uh, but yes, pains and, 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 and the allied sectors probably look interesting from from medium term perspective. Mm -hmm. But I think you should uh, pace your timing on these ones. Uh, you know, talking about IT, Mayuresh, um, while obviously now we'll step, kick into the earnings season yeah. emphasis, are you probably hoping for HCL Tech and likely so last quarter also they stood to be outperformers, 
do you feel that they can continue this court? So they have up their guidance, right? Yeah. So both the organic and the overall guidance has been up. They are maintaining the rapid margins as well. The kind of deal wins that they got in the past, uh, the expectations is that the deal wins might very well continue. Though you are probably looking at Q3, Q4 for the sector as a whole, being a little bit weak, furlough, Christmas holidays in Q3, more budget discretionary patterns being decided in Q4. But I think with the guidance that they have probably given out for the better part of this uh, fiscal itself and the expectations with the order book at hand, whether it is IMS or the engineering vertical as well, I think uh, uh, the EBIT guidance itself along with the expectations of organic growth actually improving does hold it in good stead and valuations probably appear far better than uh, the, the larger uh, peers at play. So I think yeah, it's yet like probably looks like a very, very reasonable bet for a medium to long term. All right, at 582, the last few days have not been bad. Yesterday's session took a slight bit of a breather, but as you can see there, the stock uh, post the bonus issue has uh, had a decent run up uh, compared to the other two. Yes, it has, and the run up to the results will be interesting three days from now. At the 10th, I think we'll have the results of Infosys coming out as well. So it all shapes up well. HCL Tech results, remember, on the 18th, so they're a bit far off, but they're expected to post probably the healthiest of deliveries in terms of numbers. So do watch out uh, for those names, uh, that particular name, uh, to my mind. Uh, at the end of the pre-open session, PI Industries starts are likely to uh, show, I mean, showing an indication of about 1.67% lower, so you got to keep that at the back of your mind. That aside, Inox, Leisure and Brigade are showing some minor downticks, but nothing too dramatic. No big gainers as well, save for that ITI, we don't have too many big gainers, but sugar as a pocket, Praj and the sugar, sugar names are all seemingly doing okay for themselves. This, these ethanol gains are here and counting, right, Mayuresh? Uh, Hitter too, Balrampur Chini always used to hit this point of resistance at 160, 165, then used to retreat. It's now moved up into arguably slightly newer orbits. Yeah, yeah. Do you fundamentally, excuse me, like a sugar business? Any sugar business? Yeah, so it's cyclical and you're right. I think uh, the diversion that they're probably doing towards ethanol, specifically B heavy, C heavy, I think is going to be the game changer, right? So the markets have taken cognizance of that. Uh, now, how the distillery facilities come up, because everybody is doing capex to probably up their ant, uh, specifically in terms of the ethanol blending. If you look at the OMC tenders as well, I think a huge lot has probably gone through. So the blending mix expected at 10%, I think that's the hope that the government has. It's close to 7, 7.5% 7 at this point of time. So even a 2.5% uptick in terms of those tenders coming from and actual deliveries going out, I think the kind of realizations that they'll make is, is, is going to be significant. The second element is also on their sugar inventory, right? So the MSPs uh, which have got hiked to 31, 32, the average selling prices are anywhere between 33, 33 and a half. The average cost of productions for most players and the inventory that they are sitting on is anywhere between 30 and 31. So I think they're going to make significant gains in terms of uh, even the sugar, uh, the core sugar supply itself uh, and what happens in terms of lower output this time around, right? Higher sales quota can actually come through for Maharashtra because of the lower output that comes in from the UP mills. Uh, so there is significant gain that is expected to be made. Baltrampur will in fact have its distillery which will start running up. Uh, so I think the kind of deliveries that they can do can be significant. Avad had a huge hit last quarter in terms of the inventory markup that they needed to report on their balance sheet. But even they are expected to come out with a decent number in terms of mm. uh, distillery sales. Uh, so yeah, it's a cyclical pocket but I think you should be playing that in cycles. I think the cycle for the sugar industry might very well work out for the next year, year and a half. All right, most of these stocks are nonetheless holding out pretty well. Uh, let's also take a look at what's uh, the headlines for the day. We're just minutes away from market open and we tell you all that you need to know to stay ahead in trade today. Reserve Bank of India has imposed threshold limits for asset quality, capital adequacy and profitability for urban cooperative banks. HDFC Bank in its Q3 update indicates a 20% growth in advances and 25% growth in deposits. Telecom Equipment Company, ITI reports revenue growth of 47% and a 12.4 times jump in net profit led by successful execution and cost cutting. Reliance Home Finance says the total amount of default from loans stood at 982 crores. The company's total indebtedness stood at 11,981 crores. And lastly, HSBC says that LNT is best positioned to benefit from the infrastructure investment drive. It has maintained a buy rating with a price target of 1790 rupees on the stock. Interestingly, LNT actually last few days have a seen clutch a, of a clutch of brokerage reports that have come in. And on the positive side, the commentary has been with regards to the changing infrastructure. 
infrastructure landscape. Uh, Indesh, you want a quick comment on um, LNT? I'll still wait out, and I happen to read your piece as well a few weeks back with the order book guidance that they've given yeah. at 10 to 12, right? So, 1 lakh 98,000, they're sitting on 88,000 odd at this point of time. So, need a significant catch up to do in lieu of what is happening in terms of slower government spending at this point of time. So, what comes from the private side is going to be extremely critical for LNT execution, and again, what they've probably delivered in the past few quarters, I think, hydrocarbons, heavy engineering has held up pretty well for them. But again, working capital has inched higher, so it's gone up to the level of 21, 21 and a half. Again, I think the expectations largely is to draw it back to 18 and a half, 19, which is their, uh, uh, which is their aspirational levels and maintain it there. But largely, again, I'll, I'll wait it out because what you're probably seeing in terms of lower spending that is expected in Q4, I think Q4 will be the best quarter that always has been for LNT. So if there is lower spending from the government side on, on the domestic side, I think you might see some element in terms of that order book not being able to be met, at least on the higher side at 198 or 2 lakh crores. Uh, so yeah, wait mm -hmm. and watch. I think it's, it's, it's a quality stock. There are no two ways about it. <laughs> but a lot to rush into this at this point of time.